Every now and again I like to go back and look at some classics and today I'm featuring a favourite of mine played between Gary Kasparov and Nigel Short. This was not Kasparov's uh, most difficult win but there's something about it I find very appealing. It shows what an incredibly powerful and dynamic player he was. Well let's get straight on into to the game. I should say this was played in uh, a rapid play tournament in 2001 uh, which was in celebration of Victor Korchnoi's birthday. So Kasparov with the white pieces playing against Nigel Short. Short has always had uh, difficulty against Kasparov. Remember they played World Championship match in 1993 and Short had great difficulties. Now he put up a great fight but it was a convincing victory for, for Kasparov. So it's a French defence, Tarash variation, one of the main lines. And now one can take on d4 here, that's quite possible, and it can lead to this popular variation. Um, that's a completely different story, completely different structure. But short played instead knight f6, which is also one of the main lines and leads to quite a sharp position. So we have this familiar French pawn structure where black has these pawns here. So the structure is locked in the middle of the board. So that means that as white has a space advantage on the king side through this pawn on e5, then very often he'll try to use that space advantage to attack on this side of the board because these files and diagonals are open, whereas black often tries to gain counterplay down the queen side. Okay, that's a very broad picture, of course. Let's have a look at the details. This is actually a very sharp variation that uh, has become quite popular over the past couple of decades, where white sacrifices a pawn after these moves, for example. And now Black takes this pawn here, and white actually gets very good play indeed for the reasons I've mentioned that you know these diagonals are open and white has a space advantage, but black is lagging behind in development, and well there's a very crafty move which is to queen here at swing over to the king side. It's been shown that white has very good compensation in this position. But let's go back. So Short preferred to do something different. He played his pawn to b6 with the intention of exchanging off the so-called bad bishop and, of course, exchanging off White's very dangerous attacking piece. Well, that's a very logical move, but Kasparov's response was, was superb, actually. He played bishop here, which looks very mysterious indeed. The big idea is to meet bishop here by playing the pawn to a4. And this really stymies black on the queen side. So after this exchange, then you can see that the knight on b8 simply has no decent move. It's blocked by the knight here. And this pawn controls the knight squares here. And it's very difficult for black to break free because after this move, white is not obliged to exchange because of the pin on the a-file just very difficult for black to break free and then white has a free hand on the king side as we'll see in the game. So let's go back to this move. Well what happens if black just pushes the bishop? Well actually you can retreat the bishop to a4 or d3 but uh, in, in some ways it's similar. The point is that now the bishop comes back and it's simply not possible to play the bishop to a6 because the pawn gets in the way. So it's a very clever move, bishop b5. Short simply uh, ignored the bishop for the time being and brought his bishop out, and both sides got castled. And Kasparov played his rook into the middle. This is a very useful move indeed. You have to remember that black, in order to break free from his position, he's sometimes a bit cramped, will not only be looking at the queen side, the c-file, but very often also wants to break with this move here, pawn to f6. So the rook stands very nicely on the e-file 
just covering. But also it makes room for White's Knight to come around here and it can transfer to the king side. So Short finally gets around to trying to exchange off this bad bishop. Now once again this move a4 comes in and it's still very difficult for black to develop on the, the queen side. And you know, I mentioned that this is this side of the board, the queen side is really where black wants to play, but it's very difficult now that white has this clamp. It might have been better for black to play the queen here and perhaps bring the knight out here, but it's not simple to gain counterplay. And in the meantime, it's not clear. Well, the g5 square has been weakened, and it could be that you know white can try and start an attack straight away because g5 is no longer covered by the queen. So it's not simple for black. Short exchanged off, but you can see that once more this knight simply can't move, and this is very difficult for black to gain counterplay. In the meantime, white is developing his initiative with very simple steps on the king's side. So this is kind of the easy bit. The knight has made this very familiar journey around to h5, and this is beautifully placed. Of course, Kasparov would love to see black advance the pawn to g6 to attack the knight. Uh, that would weaken these squares terribly. But Short thinks that he's got things covered by bringing the knight around to protect the king. And now watch how Kasparov builds up here. Now, there are, I think there are several ways that white could try, but his way is very instructive. I mean, my first thought would be to try to bring the queen in, and I would consider moves like queen here, and then bringing it up to f4 and perhaps to g4 to attack. But Kasparov simply played his pawn here, and the idea is to advance the pawn to h4. Now, this can be very useful indeed. There are a, a couple of ideas. I mean, one is that you keep the g5 square under control. So now it might be possible to play the, the bishop here, or perhaps the knight, and, and then bring the queen to g4. That can be very useful. Another idea is that um, you can perhaps sacrifice the knight on g7 and advance the pawn to h5 and drive the knight out of the way and attack. I mean, in fact, Kasparov's next move, king g2, actually has this in mind. He wants to sacrifice, as I said, play h5, bring the rook over to h1. I mean, this is it's such a cool way of developing the attack by Kasparov. I really like this. This king g2 looks like nothing's happened, but actually it's very clever. It's making way for the rook. But, he, but Kasparov also has something else in mind. He's actually being very clever here. Short played the queen here looking to attack this pawn and perhaps hoping to drag White's queen over to defend that pawn. But Kasparov had a very sharp eye indeed and played a fantastic move. And this is really the reason I love this game. He played his bishop here. It's a very clever idea. You know, with these knights here, it looked as though Short had everything covered, but actually he's very weak on the dark squares. Watch what happens. Pawn takes bishop, and now the queen comes in. Sorry. Queen h6 and queen g7 and mate. And because these knights are so poorly placed, in fact, there's no decent defence. If we go back just one move, uh, we'll go back to this position, actually. Instead of king g2, you might be asking, well, why can't white play the bishop here straight away? Well, let's have a quick look. In this case, there's a defence. Oh, yeah, that's another reason for playing h4, by the way, that bishop g5 is prevented. But in this case, the knight can come back and black puts up some kind of defence because the bishop covers here. So king g2 is kind of a, well, it's a clever move, but after queen d7, now we can see that the knight on f8 no longer is a, can, can move, can't make way for the bishop. So, well, this is Short's only chance to try and protect along the seventh rank, but it's absolutely hopeless because now this pawn can help with the attack. And, well, White's pieces are just too strong here. Let's just see how the game finished. That's the end. There's no decent defence to this move. 
Short took a pawn, but um, I'm sure he realised this was absolutely hopeless. And in this position he resigned. Um, if king takes knight, then queen g7 is checkmate. Just great stuff from Kasparov. Now, take a look at this game. This is the game, a game between Gilles Androuet, an international master from France, who's playing against Boris Spassky. Spassky has the black pieces. Now, do you notice a few similarities? Take a look at that knight here. Spassky is attacking. Well, he's got both knights here. That's very nice. But look at that knight on h4, looking at these rather sensitive squares. Look at white's knights. Now, perhaps that puts something in mind. Spassky's finish here is spectacular. And, well, as soon as I saw the Kasparov game, I thought about this game, which is, again, one of my favourites, and Spassky, one of my favourite chess players. Watch this. Spassky played the pawn to c5. Well, first thing to note is that if this is taken by the queen, then, for example, rook takes bishop wins. So André thought, OK, I'll take this with the pawn. OK, what did black gain from that? Well, he gained a square. Spassky came back with his knight attacking the bishop. White played the bishop here, saving the bishop. And now after Spassky's next move, White resigned. He played queen here. Now, does that remind you of Kasparov's finish? A little bit, a little bit. You can see how these knights are completely impotent, actually. Uh, they just tread on each other's toes. If pawn takes queen, the knight checks, the king has to go in the corner, and then bishop h3 threatens the unstoppable bishop g2 checkmate. Fantastic. Thanks for watching.